Hey, what's up everybody? It's Larry Lurcy. Welcome back to the channel. Very excited about today's video. We're going to take another look at Luminar AI. This one specifically, we're going to look at black and white work. I've got both a portrait and a landscape image so you can see how I would approach two different subjects, both in the black and white conversion and the post-processing in general within Luminar AI. It's going to be a lot of fun and I think you'll find we can get a pretty good balance between power and control in the processing and also keeping a good, quick, efficient workflow. If you don't already have Luminar, AI, no problem. There's a link in the description where you can check it out. I will even give you a discount code later on where you can save some money if you purchase the software. By the way, I hope you will help me with my New Year's resolution of gaining 1 billion subscribers on this channel. It's a lofty goal, perhaps impossible. I'm only about a billion short right now, but I am on my way and with your help, I think we can get there. But enough of all that, time to jump right in. So without any further ado, let's roll the intro. So here are the two images I'm going to work with. One is this landscape scene with the rocks and the beach. The other is a portrait, kind of two different types of images that we can show uh, the black and white conversion process on. Why don't we start with the portrait. First thing I'm going to do, of course, is make a copy here of that layer, and I'm going to work on the copy. I'll just call it LUM for right now for Luminar. Let's jump in. So first thing we will do is hit Edit. And we'll just jump right on into the black and white under Essentials, because this is basically what we're trying to get at. And go ahead and convert to black and white. It's going to make it black and white. And then what we have is the ability to go through these six colors and adjust the luminance of, like, for example, just the red channel. You can see it's only affecting um, where there used to be red in the image. Now, one little trick you can do is if you don't know where these colors are, you could go to saturation and slide each one up and say, okay, well, if I mess with the red, okay, those are the areas it's going to affect. Yellow is going to affect same kind of areas, but to a, a lesser extent. Blue, for example, is not going to really do very much. So that tells me um, when I get back over here to luminance, I can mess with the blue and it's really not going to do anything. There's not a whole lot of blues in the image, so that's not going to have as big effect as the red will. But we look at our basic black and white and decide you know, what way we want to go with it. Push those reds up. You can pull them back, make things darker. I kind of like pushing that up a little bit. Apply some of that yellow. I think that looks nice. Again, you could use that saturation if you wanted to bring in some sort of a tint to the skin tones, some almost like a vintage look. But we're not playing with that right now. We're just trying to get a good black and white. And I'm pretty happy with what we have there. Uh, from there, you could jump into, for example, the light, where we would work on uh, things like contrast, exposure. Here's where you would um, you know, darken the whole thing down, brighten the whole thing up, those types of things. Just tweak that a little bit. Play with the contrast a touch. And you could go in with your highlights. You get your black and whites where, for example, we'll just move the whites you can see it's just dealing with those whites. And same with the blacks. Mostly dealing with that background. But it gives you the ability to go back and lighten and darken specifically the whites or blacks and um, kind of have a little more detail, a little more control over exactly what you're doing. So uh, again, that's one more little tweak. One thing I would probably also go through and do is like the Enhance AI, this accent. I like adding a little bit of that accent sometimes, and it usually just adds a little bit of pop to the image. I'm pretty happy with that. We could also look at, if we go under Pro, we could take a look at Dodge and Burn. Now, you've got to be careful with this one because a little bit goes a long way. You can see I've got my strength down to about 7 or 8, and uh, you can go through and, for example, on Lighten, if there's areas that you wanted to add a little more highlight to, that could be... Um, place on the face, maybe going back with a smaller brush. I'm using my brackets to make it smaller. You could go into some of these lighter highlights, kind of accent those a little bit. Uh, you could lighten even like a little area like this. It's pretty dark. Whatever it is you, you want to try and accent a little bit of, you could even go to darken and, you know, come back in here. Go ahead and do like maybe the eyebrows, top of the eyelash like that. 
You could add a little more shadowing down in whatever areas you want to add shadow. Totally your call on how you do this, but kind of gives you an idea. We can turn it off and on just so you kind of see what we're getting. Just starting to add a little more form to it. And you could go through and play with those back and forth until you're happy with how you want it. And then, again, you always have the option of coming back in here and dialing that back if you go too far. But those are the primary tools that we would use on a portrait um, to get a black and white. Certainly plenty of other things we could play with the, the contrast and some of the more creative type ones as well. But uh, for here, we're pretty much good with that. And if I'm happy with it, one thing I can do is come down here and just save it. Then I would come up to Templates, hit the star for My Collection, and under User Templates, here it is, I can click Rename, and we will just put um, BW Portrait. And then if I have any other portraits similar to this, I can come back and click this preset uh, template and just jump right to it. That's pretty much how we would work a black and white portrait. Go ahead and hit Apply, and of course I would come in here and behind LUM I would put BW Portrait so that it reminds me that's the name of the preset that I used for this one. So there's our color version, there's that adjusted black and white. So um, happy with that one. Let's take a look here at this one, same thing, let's make a copy and jump into Luminar AI. Alright, so first step, go to Edit, Black and White, Convert to Black and White. Now we've got to figure out what we're going to do with our sliders. Again, you could start with saturation and go through and say, okay, well, there's where the reds are. There's our yellows. We know green will be a big player right through there. Yep. The sky. So your blue cyans are going to definitely affect that water and sky. Um, Genta not doing a whole lot. So we'll come through. Maybe we want to attack that sky first with some of the cyans and blues. And, you know, as you push it up, it's going to lighten, bring it back, it's going to darken. I kind of like bringing it down, making it a little more dramatic. We'll play with the cyan, see what that does. Think about like that. Take a look at what this green is doing there in some of these areas. You can see that making a difference. Let's look at the yellow. I kind of like that where it was. Push up that red. I'm going to push up the yellow a little bit. Okay, I think that's pretty good. As far as the tones go, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Let's jump into structure, which kind of does a little bit of a sharpening type thing and boost this up a bit. Anytime, by the way, if you feel like you've just messed this up, you can always just hit this little do over button and uh, start over again. But we'll add a little more of that. Boost it a tiny bit. I like that. Let's go into Enhance. Definitely starts adding some drama here. It's easy to go way too far with that accent, I found. You go like that and you go, oh, that looks really cool. And then you'll get it the next day and you realize you've gone way too far. So always try and use that accent like a spice and don't go too far with it. Same with the Sky Enhancer. Let's bring that back a little bit. I like that it brings some drama into the sky. I just don't want to go too far with it. And uh, we can go back into the Pro, into Super Contrast. And this image probably really benefit from playing around with some of this. You know, you can look at your highlights, push that up, see what happens. And honestly, a lot of times it's just a matter of sliding around till you think the image looks better. See, that's really darkening in that sky up there, which I, I don't need. But uh, we'll give it a little bit of that. Let's see what the shadows do for us. And a lot of times I'll just kind of juggle around between these until I'm happy with the balance of contrast that I've got in the highlights, midtones, and shadows. And um, I'm pretty happy with that. I think we've got a nice. Uh, range of tones here. We've got some darks uh, and still have some highlights, but I feel like there's still detail in the highlight and still some detail here in these blacks. So we've kept a nice uh, range there. A few things that I could probably do, go through um, with Dodge and Burn if you wanted to mess around with it is, um, again, dial this down on the darken. 
I think you could probably stand to come in on some of these rocks and uh, darken those down a touch and uh, just soften a little of those highlights, especially the ones that are here right by the edge. I think get really strong. But uh, you can play around with things like that and give it just a little more shape um, as far as where you want the highlights and um, dark areas to be. But overall, I think we're pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and save this one. Go into templates, my collection, and let's call this one BW Landscape. We'll call it landscape BW Landscape 1 because we'll probably have more of these coming somewhere down the road. So uh, again, if I've got another image that I want to apply this exact same thing to, I can come in and just hit BW Landscape 1. But the beauty of it is if I go back under Edit, I'll be able to see which things I did and have the ability to come back in and adjust them later if I've done too much or too little. So you can see it really does give you a whole lot of options from the basic black and white conversion to the ways you tweak it afterwards. So I've found that it, it really is a lot of fun to play with some of these various tools and just see what kind of results you get. And if you're happy with it, save it as a template and uh, use it on your next project. So what did you think about it? To me, it really does have a nice amount of control being able to go into those different sliders to tweak the black and white image, but at the same time, the templates give you an ability to kind of dial in your own recipe and recreate it pretty easily, or at the very least have a jumping off point for future images to get you in the ballpark of the look that you like with a black and white image. If you decide you want Luminar AI, you can use the discount code LARRYPHOTO to get a discount on the software, so hopefully that helps a little bit. Most importantly, I would love to know what you think uh, about the software. Leave me a comment. Let me know uh, how you thought the workflow worked. Uh, have you tried it yourself and had any success? Any questions about how to use it? I would love to hear from you and get your thoughts. So that's all we have for this week. I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.